Vietnam, land of the ascending dragon. Named that for its geographical shape on the world map is a plethora of amazing stimuli for the senses. Home of bun mi, pho, and much more delicious cuisine, many of it being gluten-free. It is also home to eight UNESCO sites, such as Hao Long Bay and Trang An. Amazingly awesome and friendly people and organized chaos. From Saigon's ever-growing city to the mountains of Sapa, Vietnam caters to all types of travelers. But Vietnam can be intimidating when arriving for the first time. Let me help you navigate this amazing country with tips, information, and visuals to prepare for your trip with my two-week itinerary to Vietnam. Come join me for an adventure that will cover parts of southern, central, and northern Vietnam, six cities, and more. What's up, folks? It's Derex, aka the Frisco Roamer. This video is a bit different than many of my other videos. Most of my travels are not planned and spontaneous. This particular trip I planned with my parents who wanted to see more of Vietnam. Before we begin, why don't you crush and like that subscribe button. We begin our adventure in Saigon, a popular tourist destination and also the business and financial hub of Vietnam. From there, we take a 33 hour trip by train to Hanoi, one of the world's ancient capitals. From Hanoi, we travel by private car to Nimbin, where we will pay a visit to Trang, a UNESCO site, and Baidin Pagoda. Returning to Hanoi to rest, we then travel by bus to Hao Long Bay, another UNESCO site on a five-star, three-day, two-night cruise. We will return to Hanoi to rest yet and again, then travel by bus to Sapa, home to eight out of 54 ethnic groups in Vietnam, such as the Hmong people, to spend three days exploring the area. We will return by bus to Hanoi to catch a plane to Da Nang, known as the tourist capital of South Central Vietnam and home to the Dragon Bridge. Then, by private car, finally, we reach Hoi An, known for its well-preserved ancient town. Returning to Da Nang to rest, we then go to Hue, which at one time was the national capital of Vietnam. Then we return to Da Nang and fly back to Saigon. All right, let's cover some tips and general information. Always keep a roll of toilet paper on you. There are many bathrooms that don't have any. Super crucial. Could save you from a horrible mud butt in your pants experience. Get a SIM card. It's super easy and they will install it for you. Download and use the Grab app. I don't trust taxi drivers in Vietnam. I would rather have the price for a ride set at the beginning. If you wanna go super cheap, Always grab motorbikes, not cars. While there are many gluten-free options out in Vietnam, I would recommend carrying a Vietnamese gluten-free card, which you can Google and screenshot just in case. When walking the streets, look at the motorbikes, walk confidently and at an even pace, and the swarm of motorbikes will meander around you. That was the advice I was given when I first moved to Vietnam. It is not always 100%, which is why you always look. But if you're walking at a steady pace, they should go around you. The best way to travel in Vietnam is via motorbike. However, if you're a coward like me, and you can afford to come out to Vietnam, chances are you can afford a private driver, especially if you're not solo. I was paying anywhere from 40 to 50 USD for a whole day with a private car. I also liked taking limos on shorter trips between one and two hours. Limos are merely luxury vans that are private and more comfortable than buses. The dollar really stretches far in Vietnam. If you are in the Da Nang area and want a legit private driver, hit me up. I got friends. Planes can be cheap, especially via jet, but expect a 60% chance of a delay, and then another 40% chance of an additional delay. Gate changes are common too. Sleeper buses also work for longer distances and grab bikes and grab cars are great for traveling within cities. The train is an amazing experience and I would recommend it at least once. Of all the places I've lived and traveled to, I think Vietnamese people are some of the most interesting people to photograph and many of the Vietnamese are open to being photographed. This is personal to me, but there is just something about the culture, lifestyle and people that really catches my attention. 
I'll share photos of people I've captured while giving more tips and advice so you don't have to see my face. We traveled during the months of November and December because the temperature wasn't too hot in the south and was fine in the north. Da Nang was flooding while we were in Vietnam, but when we were in Da Nang it didn't rain while we went out, so we got lucky. Sapa begins to get super foggy around this time, making it difficult for seeing scenery. We were fortunate that it wasn't that bad. However, it did get cold in Sapa, especially in the evening. Also, you will see the rice paddies barren and lifeless during this time. The best time to go to Sapa is from March to May and September to October. September is when the rice is ready to harvest and you can see those amazing colors. Use common sense. While I feel Vietnam is safe, cats out there do like to snatch and grab. If you are in, say, District 1 Saigon taking videos or photos and not paying attention, someone might mob up on you via motorbike and snatch your bag or phone. People ride their motorbikes on the sidewalk as well. If I am on a motorbike and I got valuables like my camera gear, I tend to turn my backpack into a chest pack. Saigon, a city that doesn't sleep. Home to Landmark 81, the second tallest building in Southeast Asia, and the 17th tallest building in the world. In addition, Saigon is known for its classic French architecture and incredible temples and pagodas. My journey begins on the other side of the city, in District 7, where many Westerners and Koreans call home. I lived in District 7 for three years and then moved to Taiwan. When COVID hit, I was no longer able to visit my family and friends who currently live in Vietnam. This was a long-awaited opportunity to visit family, old friends, and make new ones. It was also an opportunity to see what projects my friends were up to. Our journey begins on a mildly hot evening at the train station in Saigon. This was the main part of our trip that wasn't really planned, but it was not difficult getting tickets for the train. My dad had heard some good things about taking the train and I didn't question it. I never experienced it, and I'm usually always down to experience new things. I will not go into detail about the train trip. If you are interested in my train trip, I will share a link of that video at the end of this one. That video is not informational, but I highly recommend taking the train regardless of the 30 plus hour ride. It is quite a fun experience that can give you a nice opportunity to engage with locals, try local food, and see parts of Vietnam from the south to the north. <laughs> Where's the party at? I had a good time. Oh. <laughs> Located on the banks of the Red River, Hanoi, also known as the City of Lakes, is one of the world's ancient capitals. We arrived here at 5 a.m. from the train station and hung out at the hotel lobby for a bit before venturing out to explore. We didn't stray far from Hoan Kien Lake, as Hanoi was more of a home base for us to travel to nearby places. One thing I really like about Vietnam is there is rarely a dull moment on the streets, and I love wandering the streets. The lake area is a place to find locals selling a variety of items. Locals and visitors alike can be found relaxing, taking pictures, exploring, purchasing goods, or just going on a walk. Some areas of interest are Turtle Tower, Noxon Temple, and Pen Tower. Whoa, what's this? Lotus Water Puppet Theater? I never saw a puppet show before. Come on, let's try something new. There were quite a few shorts that were comical, and we also learned some Vietnamese culture and history, including the legend of Hoang Kien Lake in Turtle Tower. I would totally recommend going to the puppet theater. But it doesn't stop here. Nighttime is just as energized, if not more, than the daytime as you can find street performers and walking streets for people to enjoy a variety of activities. Walking the streets of Vietnam is always an adventure. Whoa, watch out for the kids driving around. One other place of interest located near the lake is the St. Joseph's Cathedral. 
another popular place with many shops and locals hanging out. Baidin Temple is the largest temple complex in Southeast Asia. Surrounded by mountains and forests, Baidin is a beautiful place boasting amazing architecture and an amazing landscape. Baidin Mountain was founded by King Din Tian Huang, and the ancient Baidin Pagoda was built in 1136 by Master Win Min Kong. Since 2003, the pagoda has been restored and expanded with a total area of more than 1,000 hectares today. This amazing complex could take several days to explore in its entirety, especially if you are into photography and videography. I have been here twice and have not explored it all. While never visiting the complex at night, I saw pictures while there and with all the lights it gave it a completely different feel than during the day. I'm gonna have to go check it out one of these days. Home to Vietnam's first capital, Ninh Binh is a perfect location for those who love nature and adventure. Trang An is a protected UNESCO World Heritage Site. If this is not enough, Kong Skull Island movie was filmed here. This was my second time in Trang An, and my parents loved it here. There are three routes you can choose from. My parents made me pick, and I chose the longest one as I wanted to maximize my time here. I have not done the other two routes. The beauty of Trang An did not disappoint. Come along and let's explore together. Located in the Gulf of Tonkin, in the northeastern province of Quang Ninh, this 150,000 hectares area boasts 1,600 limestone islands and islets in emerald colored waters. And it is not only a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but it is also one of the wonders of the world. We got a deal from our hotel about a five-star cruise, and since it was a bit more than the four-star, we decided to go all out. I almost never do anything five-star. I just don't make enough money to live like that. But you can enjoy quite a bit of luxury while in Vietnam. Many things are affordable. This was our five-star boat. It met our expectations for sure. For those who get seasick, they do not have seasick pills, and it was such a hassle to buy them at the pharmacy that I didn't buy any. And I would recommend bringing your own from your country. The good news was I didn't get seasick at all, which was a first for me. They also catered to my gluten-free diet and provided me with all the gluten-free dishes. Another tip about going to Hao Long Bay is to do the full three days, two nights on the cruise. Let me explain why. If you do a one day and leave from Hanoi, you won't arrive to Hao Long Bay until the early afternoon. When you get there, you have to wait for a boat that will take you to your cruise boat. By the time you arrive on the boat, you have a briefing, late lunch, and then you go to your rooms to relax for a hot minute before going out for kayaking and swimming. Finally, you will go back and eat dinner and sleep. You will get up early the next day to enjoy a short morning adventure and then you're done. In my opinion, it's a complete waste of time. Different tours may be different, but that's how it was on our boat. Activities on this tour include happy hour, karaoke, dancing, pool, making your own spring rolls. Here's mine. And it didn't fall apart. I was pretty happy with it. And squid fishing. Though we caught nothing. One of the guys caught this crab, but he tossed it back. Other activities include swimming and kayaking. No waterproof camera, so no footage. Come join me and let's check out the scenery. Kappa Island was a nice experience and it was good to get off the boat. We biked, 
but you can also take a golf cart vehicle as well to check out the countryside and see a small village and learn about their way of life. I'm not a fan of tours. I don't like traveling like a tourist, but sometimes you get a group that you have chemistry with. Our group consisted of a man from Greece, two men from Holland, and a couple from Sri Lanka, and us, Mexico and the United States. Uh, I'm about to drink uh, snake wine. What, the snake wine? Yeah. Maybe try it. Yeah, okay, I'll try right now. Okay. How do you say how do you say when you enjoy to uh, cheer together? Is it now with Saiba? Uh what well, hi bot yo yeah. hi You see monkeys? Hopefully. Cool. Yes. Over there. <laughs> 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 yeah. A very rare sight is the Katba Langer. They are endemic monkeys of Katba Island. There are less than 60 left in the wild. If you manage to see one, consider yourself very lucky. Let me use my magic and see if we can find some. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, they're, they're there. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll see oh. a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, you see his head? The next part of our adventure was going to Sapa. We managed to get a three-day tour, all-inclusive, hotel, three meals a day, gluten-free for me, of course, and activities. We left the morning after finishing up with Haolong Bay on a sleeper bus, not really to sleep, well, at least not me, but to stretch and relax. Everything felt rushed in Sapa. After getting off the bus and eating lunch at the hotel, we immediately started our tour. I was happy to finally walk. All we have been doing for the past few days was sitting in cars, boats, and buses. I needed to move around. Our guide was from the Hmong people, and we walked through Sapa Town. Downtown Sapa was still the same in many respects. However, there were some big changes as well. Sapa was looking way more French than usual. Buildings and areas have changed vastly since last coming here, but the people seemed the same. We soon descended the valley on our way to Cat Cat Village. Let's see what we can find on our descent. Cat Village was founded in the middle of the 19th century by the Hmong people. When the French came to the village in the early 20th century, they turned it into a vacation resort. A main feature of the village is a beautiful waterfall the French called Cat Scat, which is why the village is now called Cat Cat. The Hmong, among the other groups who reside here, still hold their old traditions of crafts and culture. Cat Cat was way too touristy for me. I thought it was beautiful with interesting things to see, but with all the people and people renting clothes to dress up like different groups that didn't even represent the groups there, 
it was a little bit too much for me. I don't regret going, but it just wasn't my style. When we finished, everyone hopped in the van to go back to the hotel. I had the van drop me off in downtown Sapa because I wasn't ready to go back to the hotel. I was glad I did as I met the only break dancer in Sapa and had a chance to interview and session with him. I'm a dancer too, so I had to represent even if I'm a bit rusty, but that's another story. Today we would walk the opposite direction with our final destination being Elin Ho Village. We would walk a bit in town before descending to the villages below. People think I like hiking. I actually don't. I hike because I enjoy photography and shooting videos. And oftentimes to see beautiful things you have to hike. I would rarely hike for the sake of hiking. But these walks were great because there was always something to see. Scenery was constantly changing and meeting people vastly different than me is always a cool thing. So I never thought about the time or how tired I was or how much farther we needed to go. I was always in the moment and enjoyed every minute of it. Come see for yourself. Our last day we traveled to Tavan, our guide's village. This was in the opposite direction of Ilin Ho. Like the day before, this would be a long hike with a variety of scenery. The ground was more difficult to traverse because of mud and rocks, so I spent most of the time shooting photography rather than videos. Talking to my guide, I learned that many, if not all the ethnic groups of Sapa are from China. I had no idea. And before COVID, they used to be able to freely pass through Vietnam and China. This time we had a team of Hmong people with us and I think they adopted my mom. This was one of the most interesting hikes I ever been on because it was the first time in my life I felt like I was a character with a party in one of my Dungeons and Dragons games. It felt surreal. I had such a difficult time with this Sapa segment that I think I might make another video about my trip in Sapa as so much happened. The Hmong people were great as they helped my mom walk the whole way. For that, they will always have my respect. Of course, when we reached the village and some of our party members departed, I had no choice but to purchase some of their wares, and I never buy anything. But it was the only way I could show my appreciation for how well they took care of my mom. Known as the tourist capital of South Central Vietnam, it's known for its sandy beaches and history as a French colonial port. Da Nang is probably my favorite city in Vietnam and where I would consider living because it has a modern feel, it's by rivers and beaches, has a variety of cuisine, and has much less traffic than Saigon and Hanoi. Like Hanoi, Da Nang would be our home base while we explore places around the Da Nang area like Hoi An and Hue, and a couple of special locations. Remember how I said Hanoi was energized at night and all of Vietnam is like this? Well, Da Nang did not disappoint. It was cracking out here on these streets. Let's see what we can see. Hey, look at this. Is there a lobster? No, I just ate dinner. If I if I didn't eat dinner and I knew you guys had all this, I would have came here and just ate right here. Maybe, yeah, I might come back here for dinner. Tomorrow? Yeah. Every day? Every day. Every night. Every night? Okay, yes, and I might come back, man. Damn, this is good. Thank you, sir. Ooh. Our first mission outside of Da Nang City was My Song Sanctuary. After getting in, it was a short walk to the carts. Then a short ride to its stop, followed by a longer walk, but still short, to the site. Oh, look in the distance. See that? We haven't seen a sign yet, but that looks interesting. Let's explore. Believe it or not, and this might be an extremely bold statement, but this might be my favorite ruins 
that I've ever seen. And I've seen Machu Picchu, Angkor Wat, Tulum in Mexico, and, and lots of more ruins. And the reasons are these. Number one, every time I go, it's almost always empty or just a couple of people there. And I've been there three times. Number two, it's under 10 USD to enter and you get to see traditional dances and music shows on their stage. Number three, it's in the middle of the jungle, which adds to its mystique. Number four, the ruins are well maintained. Some of the sculptures and writings are still extremely detailed. I have not seen ruins kept this well in the 45 countries I've visited. Number five, it's a small location. There isn't that much walking or climbing. You hit a few sites within the area, see some live performances, and you're done. A unique culture developed between the 4th and 13th centuries who were spiritually involved in Indian Hinduism. Over 10 centuries, the temples were constructed in what was the homeland of the ruling Dua clan, which unified the Cham clans and established the kingdom of Champapura. Today, Indian and Vietnam have a joint effort in maintaining this amazing site. Sadly, many of the temples were destroyed during the Vietnam War. You can still see some of the craters today. Coconut Island was another spontaneous trip. Our driver asked us after we left Maison Sanctuary if we wanted to go there. I didn't research anything about it and as usual, just said, yup, because I never been. Coconut Island was a fun experience. Cruising along on a spherical boat, seeing the buildings along the water and watching other boats and people cruising along. No, doth my ears deceive me? No, that's Gangnam Style, the worst song ever created. No, stop! As we came around the mangrove, there was a man dancing on his boat for show. I'm not gonna lie. I find Gangnam Style to be one of the most irritating songs ever made. But for some reason, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it just made sense. It was the perfect song for this occasion. And I couldn't help but just nod my head and enjoy the show. It worked so well. I would have preferred Gangnam Style over songs I love. Just this once. Afterwards, men were tossing nets into the river to fish. That is also a tourist attraction that my dad and I were able to try. Damn, look at my incredible form comes from all the dancing I've done. I was actually impressed with the photo. I thought I was gonna fall into the river, but I did real well for my first time. My dad also gave it a go. I also wanna add this, as this was a fun experience, our guide also explained as best he could that there was some bad history here with bombings and he looked visibly distraught. I was glad that he shared this information with me so I can understand the history and his perspective. Located on Vietnam's central coast, Hoi An is known for its ancient town which has been preserved quite well with channels cutting through the town. From wooden Chinese shops and temples to French colonial buildings, Vietnamese tube houses and its Japanese covered bridge and pagoda, Hoi An is a big pot of mixed eras and styles. Hoi An is another UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its tailoring, silk shops and silk trade. If you want to pimp yourself out, this is the spot to go to. We didn't have a plan here. We basically just wandered the streets and went window shopping. But as I said before, there's always something going on in the streets of Vietnam. So let's peep the scene. It looks like it's time for a snack. Spring rolls will do the job. Yum.
Located in central Vietnam, Hue, which means harmony in Vietnamese, was the national capital from 1802 to 1945. Hue has over 100 pagodas, palaces, temples, and tombs. Vietnam's most prestigious university, and some would say Vietnam's most attractive woman. Hue is not only popular for its architecture, but also its food. Hue became the capital of Vietnam in 1802. It was the political, cultural, and religious center under the Win Dynasty until 1945. The citadel houses the Imperial City. Within the Imperial City are the Purple Forbidden City, Outer Court, Temples and Palaces of Worship, Inner Court, Gardens, and Pavilions. Built in 1803 under Emperor Jia Long, it mainly served a ceremonial function during the French colonial period. After the end of the monarchy in 1945, it suffered neglect and damage during the Indochina Wars in the 1980s. The Imperial City was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1993. Let's explore the grounds. Super off topic, but my dad and I discussed how great this place would be if a zombie apocalypse happened. It's got a moat, high walls, you can section off areas during an outbreak, grow crops. Just seems like an ideal spot. Tien Mu Pagoda was built in 1601 and stands on the bank of the Perfume River. In 1601, this pagoda was founded by Win Huang, governor of the Duan Hoa province. Its buildings have been destroyed and rebuilt over time, several times. Since the 1960s, it has been a site of political demonstrations. The car that took the monk, Thich Quang Duc, who burned himself alive in Saigon on June 11th, 1963, to protest the persecution of Buddhists, resides here as well. Located on Chao Chu Mountain, Kaiden Tomb, which was recognized as a World Cultural Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1993, pretty much blew my mind with the architecture and details of the site. The tomb belongs to, of course, Kaiden, who was the emperor from 1885 to 1925. I don't have much more to say about this place, only that it's one of the most impressive places I've seen. Let me show you why.
And now we head back to Saigon to get hyphy with the homies. I wasn't a tourist in Saigon, but I will share a list of a few places you can visit while there. And there you have it. I hope that this video helps and inspires you to visit Vietnam. It's a great country to visit and to have as a home base as there are so many countries close by. Don't hesitate to ask questions or leave comments if you need additional help. This itinerary can be altered, of course, where you can spend more or less time in certain places. Finally, I don't know how others travel, so I can't comment on price, but you could do this trip minus the airfare for well under 1,000 USD. Or you can spend more. It just depends how many tours you want to do, the types of hotels you stay at, and the restaurants you eat at, and how many people you travel with. Alright folks, peace and keep being curious.